Good afternoon everyone, I'm Rev Becca. Uh, thank you for watching. Today we're going to cover a bit about installing the cutout brake sensors. So if you have a hydraulic brake set or you have an integrated brake and gear set, uh, this bike does not but it does have a hydraulic brake, we want to put a cutout on this system so that when we're braking the motor will not engage under any circumstances. So this is a safety feature, it's also useful for a couple of other things like when you're coming to a stop getting your feet into the right position for example um, so that you can take off at the lights without actually engaging your motor while you're doing that. So firstly why don't we tilt this up so it's much easier to work on and be able to see what we're actually doing. Second thing, I'll tilt this towards the screen as well. So this is our upgraded full color display. And this is gonna have the benefit of actually showing us when the sensor is in the correct position. Um, so that's gonna be extremely helpful rather than having to experiment by running the motor and then working out when the brake is actually engaging that cutout. So the standard displays do not have this feature. It's another reason why we're moving towards these full colour displays. The tools you'll need for this job are a scrap of sandpaper, two-part epoxy, the brake sensor and a magnet. There are some different size magnets so you can play around with the strength of them too. Okay, so this is the sensor. We've got a sensor and a magnet, right? So the idea is when they move apart, uh, the brake cutout will engage. So we've plugged this in. And what we can see now is that the little exclamation mark has come up on the screen. So that means that the magnet is too far away from the sensor. And if we try running the motor now, no action at all. Okay, so if I put this magnet up close, we can see that that symbol disappears. So if we want to run the motor now, no problems at all. Most important is getting the position right. I thought this was going to be a very difficult lever to work with. Often the hydraulics are because this section here, um, getting up close to where the lever is can be very tricky. I actually discovered that if I put the magnet just in the slot on the very end of the lever like that, and I am going to glue that into position, and then we put the sensor down here, we don't have any exclamation mark at that point, and then when I pull the lever, the exclamation point comes up. So after a bit of fiddling around, I've decided that this is the best position for the sensor. So there's our sweet spot. It's just about finding where it engages and uh, making sure you're happy with the, uh, the position. It does come with double-sided tape. Don't trust that. It's going to vibrate loose um, and often when it's cold or hot that glue will give up. So we use two-part epoxy here. So the first stage is we use a bit of sandpaper to actually scuff up the surface a little so the glue will bond better. So I just need a little scrap bit of um, sandpaper just on the surface here that we are going to apply the glue to. Just key that a little bit to make sure we've got some grab. The other part is on the lever itself where that magnet's going to go. And even on the magnet itself. All right, so now we'll make up a little batch of epoxy. Okay, so JB Weld, very, very fantastic glue. Um, it's hard to get the right amount mixed up, but uh, so you're always going to waste a little bit like we've done here. We have tried some different sorts of glue and we've found that this is definitely the most robust solution. And ever had a use for these dead cable tie ends? Well, they make for great little paintbrushes for epoxy. Mix it up nice and well. It'll go a grey colour. All right. That's pretty good. So now we're going to apply this to our sensor and our magnet. Well, can't do the magnet. So that's really 
sucking the glue right through the hole in the middle of the magnet as well. All right, so the other part, we wanna take off this sticky goo that we don't trust. Get rid of that. A little bit of a scuff on here. Just etch into that plastic a bit. And we'll get our epoxy. So we'll pop that magnet in position first. We're going to turn the system back on again so of course we can see the screen to make sure we're getting it in the same position. Alright, so fairly obviously it's too far away at the moment. We've got that exclamation mark. So we want to have it roughly there and then we try pulling the brake and we're getting that exclamation mark coming up. Okay, so that's our, our sweet spot. There we go. Now, one benefit of having it up upright is that there's less chance of movement, but of course it is going to move. So I'm just gonna grab a cable tie to hold that in place. All right. So once this glue dries, there's not much that can be done. Doesn't hurt to check this as many times as you can, even during the drying process, so that it's in the right position. Just angling it so it points more towards the magnet. And I might, in fact, just hold this, clamp this here with a cable tie as well. All right, so essentially that's it. Wait for it to dry, put it back in the correct position. And then you have the ability to turn your pedals without the motor engaging, just from the slightest bit of braking. You can, of course, have this set so that the friction braking function of the lever is not engaging. Uh, you can just engage the cutout for the motor before it actually starts engaging on the disc. So however you'd like it set up, but essentially that is job done. So the same setup can be used on our hub motor kits with the LCD3. So you can see the symbol coming on here. So that's the symbol on the LCD3 for the brake sensor cutout. If there's anything we haven't covered here, please feel free to give us a call or look at our website for more information. I've been Rev Becker. Thanks for watching. Ciao.